Does the recording have sound? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's let's get ready and start going. So, welcome everybody. Today we're going to be uh, talking about polishing your game. So we're gonna go over some examples of some unpolished and polished games, and we'll write a README file, and I'll share this link for everyone so you can have it as a link as a reference to polish your game in Kajam. So first off, let's go and take a look at a relatively unpolished game. So the classic Kaboom platformer. All right. So the, in this platform we see here, we have a little character. We can hit it and we can if we hit the apple, we start growing big. Now take a look at the image quality. It gets distorted. And, and some of these sound effects are, are really sharp. As well as frame rate, the camera is not smooth transition. So we'll talk about all of these today as we do our, uh, do our polishing stuff. Another unpolished game. I want to hear all of you uh, tell me why this is not a polished game in the discussion. So post in the Kajam22 channel, and all right, we send the link in the chat as well. So it just looks like this, a very you know basic platformer we have here. It looks well, it looks very bad. Um, what would you guys like to say about? How this game is not polished. Yes, it's laggy, it's basic. The graphics that I drew, I was just being very lazy. So obviously it's not going to be polished graphics. So the background has no decoration whatsoever. The you know the animations are choppy and there are no sound effects. Yes, wall glitches. Oh, they yeah, tried that out. I, I think I fixed it. So yeah, we'll just close this right here. So unpolished games, you guys can tell the difference. Now let's go and play a few polished games that I have picked out, and let's see what you guys think. So I'll send the link in the chat to the next one we have. This is our previous Kajam winner of the most polished games. So it looks like this. You can see the graphics are very well defined. It's not blocky, they're high definition. You can see the transition to each one is very nice. There is shading, you see these little particles when the player is walking. Everything is very smooth in here. Graphics are beautiful. Okay, so you guys uh, kind of get the concept. This is relatively simple, but it is a very amazing and polished game. You can just go on playing this forever. So I'll move on to the, our next one. One of my personal favorites. I'll send the link in the chat. This was not made on Replit, but in my opinion is a very, very polished game. And if you guys play this, it, listen to the sound effects. The, the sound effects are very well defined, sound designed. Taking a moment to load here. Okay. Taking a moment to load. This is a pretty large game, so. All right, so this is the menu transition. Did you see that animation right there? So a good introduction always says a lot. Still loading a bit here. Oh, the sound is loud. Turn the volume down a bit. Um, 
I think I'm, it's a little laggy for me to be playing this right now because I'm streaming. Um, okay, let's see if this fix. No, it did not fix. Unfortunately, I I can't play this. This is it's way way too laggy since I'm streaming at the same time and my internet speed is is very slow. But the link, if you're wondering, is overboy dot itch dot io slash mobs inc. Um, so I mean, those are our basic examples of polished and unpolished games. So now let's move on. Well, we got a readme file here. I'm just going to just say game polishing reference. And here, let's start with graphics. So game graphics are a very important part of the game because if you have a game with bad graphics or you know, luck, yucky looking stuff, you don't want to play it, right? So uh, one of the first things I would probably say in here is image quality. So just like in some of the other games I showed you, you have to have a solid good looking images that don't blur and don't look, you know, blurred pixelized and stuff. So if you want to have pixel art, you use high definition pixels. And if you're going to use vector graphics, then that's a great option. So the image quality would be great. Let me write down a little bit about it. So high definition. as visually appealing. Okay. So besides image quality, what do you guys think? Um, oh, say someone asked me a pixel sprite sheet rendering engine. Um, okay, so I usually use P5 in client-side JavaScript, which does come with its own you know, rendering engine. Um, but I mean, the most information I can give you about pixel art, one of my favorite tools, is Piscale, which is located at piscaleapp.com. So I'll just write a section for pixel art on its own. It's um, one of the tools is, oops, is located at piscaleapp.com. Very amazing tool, helps you with animations and everything. Export is completely free, usable in your browser or as an app. All right, create some space here. So from image quality and graphics, what else do you guys uh, think about game graphics? When you hear the word graphics, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? OK, well. Um, yeah, while I wait for some answers, RTX, what is that? Um, yeah. Oh, frames per second. Yeah, frames per second it does play a, a very important part. I'll put that in the end later, uh, which is on performance, which I'll, that's another large section we have in here. So. One thing about image about graphics is contrast. So you don't want to have a game where you cannot see everything that's really dark or things blend into each other. You want to be able to see all the different game components. So I'm going to write a little bit on this. Visibility. We have color. We need to be able to see everything. And we have to choose a good palette. Um, I mean, some 3D games, you don't really have a palette since there are shader, a shading and everything. But if you're choosing for a 2D game, which in my opinion, usually are more polished, um, you need to choose a good palette, whether in pixel or vector art. You have to and make a more important game component uh, game components 
appear higher in contrast. So that means uh, birds flying in the background, obviously you want to keep them, you know, close, uh, close contrast to the sky. You don't want to have them, you know, appear to be at the front of everything. Um, one, one very good um, technique to use when you are when you are doing graphics is outline things. So have you ever played a video game where it's, you know, kind of retro style and players or have a black or white outline around them? So I mean that outline around the player that is very defining. It, it lets you locate the player a little better than rather letting it blend into the background colors of outline or a drop shadow is very, very important. So like I said earlier, I'm just going to write this for reference. Keep background stuff in the background. Turn off the preview here. It's starting to lag. Okay, so I think that's about it for um, contrast. Now, uh, another thing I would like to say uh, for graphics is very important have a well defined background. So the player may not always be looking at the background, but you need to be able to have something to give that uh, that correct aesthetic. So um, keep the background, as I said earlier, in the back. Make sure you draw it well and make it, make it you know, uh, bring forth the player, and not bring forth, you know, uh, reflect the player, reflect the game components a little better. Um, then don't mix different themes or aesthetics into each other. So this means, um, same with choosing a palette, you're not going to, you know, put a put solid red into a a dark blue aesthetic game. Or something like that. So you know, try to stay on topic. And another, and some more stuff I like to point out is number one, transitions. So do you remember in earlier in the video that uh, putter game, how there was a transition between between theme? You need to you know have a nice transition that kind of defines your game. So maybe slide into another. Uh, area or something instead of just rapidly switching it it feels it might feel a little too fast um all right and also once more animations um like i said earlier in the game while describing them if they were polished or not you need to have smooth animations so if a player were to jump don't just make them jump at a linear speed use a uh, a more curved if you know what i mean type of transition so it appears to be actually be a force if you are having a camera to follow the player like in the kaboom platformer make it a little smoother so it kind of follows the player at a smoother speed so remember animation smoothness plays a very important part in game balancing I mean, game polishing, sorry. All right, so let's move on to our next section, sound design. Sound design is a little more tricky, especially since it, it's, it's not visual. It does, you cannot remember it as well. So I'd like to hear some of y'all's opinions. What, uh, what games uh, have good sound design and why do you say that? Celeste, well, unfortunately, I've never played that. Why does Celeste have a good sound design, in your opinion? 
the, the soundtrack. Yes, music plays a very important role. So, I mean, have some music. Now, make sure if it's in the background, keep it, uh, keep the volume low. So you don't want to overwhelm the other sound effects with um, background music. The next is uh, just like I said, the background music, sound effects. Keep them uh, louder. Keep them louder than the background music coming from the player or effects to the player is it should be uh, it should be louder much more intensified than the background music beat saver um yeah has some nice slashing sounds i guess i could agree on that one so that also goes with sound effects Geometry Dash, I've never, I've never played that before. Okay, so, well, I just kind of want you guys um, to come up with opinions. One other thing I'd like to mention is, is we don't want sharp sound effects. So this means, um, even if you're using a retro game, don't like make a loud high pitch beep or something like that, that will, you know, want the player to turn off sound. Your goal is to make the player want to listen to the soundtrack or or the sound effects of your game. So if somebody immediately mutes your game audio, that's not a good sign, right? So yeah, don't use sharp sound effects. Use smoother sound effects. And also try to use high definition. So yeah, and nobody likes to listen to a uh, cranky, distorted sound effects. And a very, very important point I'd like to say is don't play too many sound effects at the same time. So this means um, if you have, you know, a whole army of soldiers fighting, you don't want a sound effect coming out of every single soldier. One uh, very terrible mistake I made um, is in my game Battle of Five Armies. Um, every single soldier, when fighting, would create a clashing sound with a sword, and they would overlap, and it got terrible. Waiting for this to load real quick. Oh, you remember that? <laughs> you definitely remember the sound. Let me just go to the live link real quick. Wait for this to, to wake up and we'll go back to that later. I mean, this is about it I have for a sound design. I'm not a professional sound designer, so. I wouldn't really know. All right. Actually, let's go ahead and try to edit a sound effect to make it sound a little better. So I found a really cool tool, mp3cut.net. So the link in the chat. Um, this helps you to change the volume. You can change the bass. You can change a lot of different stuff in your sound effect. And would somebody give me a free sound effect, uh, some sort of royalty free sound effect that's, you know, kind of choppy or something. I guess I could edit that and make it a little better. Right. Maybe I'll go and get one. Um, wait a moment for me while I, while I try to go get a sound effect. You guys can just watch this rep will wake up while I'm doing that. It's, it's very entertaining. Take a look at that robot loading. It's beautiful. 
Right, let me just go and get a sound effect. I'm doing this in another tab. Um, how about a gunfire? If I, know, if I know guns, then we'll, we'll just do a laser. I mean, some laser sounds are very cheesy. It's not wanting to load. Come on. Okay. Maybe just explosion sound effects. Yeah, this rep will walk, and this rep does not want to wake up. Um, yeah, let me get a sound effect first. Okay. The sound effect website is loading very slowly for sure, but. Let me see if this one's a good one. It's not playing. Bandwidth. Okay, I'm sorry guys, my internet speed is way too slow. If, you, if somebody could just get a an audio file and send it through the Discord, I could use that. But, um, yeah, let's just move on. Start from wasting your time. Nate, so next on is UI and interface. Um, I find it pretty difficult to develop a, a good game interface, on, like on a canvas or something, if it's not HTML or CSS. So first of all, I'd like to say is match the game theme. Don't use like an off topic UI theme. Try to make it, you know, follow along with the game aesthetic. Another thing is, of course, have a clean design. You don't want to have a blocky interface design. You want to have it to where it's easily accessible to the player. And you want to have it have the probably the highest contrast of the game. Maybe under the player, over the player in terms of contrast, but you're going to need to have a high contrast if you want to have a good game interface. One other thing is you want to maybe use something to make the player know what, what something does. So use meaningful icons. Or if you are using icons, or use text to describe the right thing, the right command. And also, you're going to want to maybe use like flashing, flashing indicators. Sometimes, if you you know want the player to click on something, if they're not clicking on it or press a certain key. So I mean that's about it for interface. Just use your web design skills. I'm sure Bookie would be great at this. And that's about it for interface. So let's talk about performance. Um, you need to have a frame rate of at least 50 to 70 frames per second. If you go too low, it gets very difficult to keep up with the game. And if you go too high, things go too fast. That's really, really not what you want. So 60 would be the most reasonable frame per, uh, frame per second speed, um, but an average of 50 to 70 would uh, prob uh, probably be the most desirable range. Also minimize on memory. So if things are off the screen, this means don't draw them. If uh, things are on the screen, make sure you draw them, of course. Um, you want to destroy any 
can any, uh, for example, enemies that have been killed. So remove them from your arrays. Remove it from the the memory of your game. You don't want to store any unnecessary data. This really, really affects performance. And if you are storing up, let's say, thousands of items in an array, whereas only a few of them are being used, that really, really will not be good. Um, also, um, with the minimization on memory, optimization. Optimize your code. Google for the fastest ways in that particular language to run things. So, for example, in JavaScript, four of loops are very slow relative to normal integer loops. Cache the length of arrays or cache some special, special items with variables. You don't need to repeat yourself in things that you are caching all the time. So just pay attention to optimization if you want to keep the performance of your game fast. Would anyone like to say anything about, um, about performance? What do you think can improve game performance? Memorize functions? Is that what you're trying to say? Memetize. Oh, okay, so yeah, trying to... Hmm. Let me look up the definition of memetize. I kind of understand what it means, and I kind of don't understand what it means. Memetize. I did not get that in the dictionary. I'm not sure if that's an... Active. I mean, I'm not sure if that's an act, uh, an actual word. Memoise. Oh, yeah, we go. I think that's the correct one. Let me look th look it up. Yes, that's the correct word. Not to be confused with memorization in computing. Memorization or memorization is an optimization technique used primarily to speed up computer programs by storing the results of expensive functioning calls and returning the cache result when the same inputs occur again. Okay, let me write down my memoise. I'm, I'm not sure if I pronounced that correct. This this means cache, a, a expensive functioning calls with the same inputs. So I guess that's just a yeah. So I mean as for performance, on another thing we can do is don't update things you don't need to. So if the player is supposed to update its speed whenever you're, whenever it's moving. Don't update the speed to be the same as itself when the player's not moving, for example. Um, okay, so that's about it for performance. Let's go on to the pixel art section. So, I mean, pixel art is a very popular way to make graphics quick and easy for games. Um, so right now, I've, I'm gonna mention some tools that can be used for pixel art or that are very, very easy to develop pixel art with and effective. So pixel art is a very nice tool as well. I mean, it's one of the largest pixel art communities out there, literally an artist website. There are so many cool stuff on there. Um, I wasted a few hours of my life just looking through how amazing some of those pictures were. Um, so Pixel and Pixel Art are probably my personal favorites. I don't really know about any others. As a price, okay, we'll add that. Um, as a Yeah, I I remember I've heard about this one. I just forgot it. As a price, a sprite. All right, yeah. So Connor says it is paid, but is worth the price. And a lot of game developers use it, so I'm assuming it's a very good tool. And th there's a nice site for uh, pixel art tutorials. Uh, it's, um, oops, let me take a look. I think I bookmarked it. 
Um, search through my history, see if I can find this. Pixel art. Um, pixel art tutorials. All right, so it's located at lowspec.com slash pixel dash art dash tutorials. Um, lots and lots of amazing tutorials on animation, drawing, walking cycle, shading, there's outlining, fabric. There's so many cool stuff here. Very, very amazing. Mm, what else would you guys like to say about pixel art? I guess um, not much. So um, we still have a lot of time, about an hour and no, not not an hour. We got about 50, 50 more minutes. So how about what what I'm going to do here is I'm going to describe a game, and you guys are going to write down points to me about polishing it. So for example, if I were to say um, I want to make a tower defense about this and that, you guys are going to write a very detailed description on the outline, the blueprints, and, and, maybe, and we're, maybe we could just keep this in here as a reference. So what kind of, what kind of game should we describe first? Platformer, I mean, we could go tower defense, first person shooter, RPG. A racing game. Okay, yeah, that would be a pretty cool one to kind of describe. So, racing game blueprint. Like Mario Kart. Oh, we were practicing 2D polishing, not 3D polishing. I don't know anything about WebGL or stuff like that. Okay, nonetheless, let's just get ahead into this. So, let's divide this into categories. Graphics. Um, let's go sound, interface, just like earlier in the polish.md file, and, um, performance. Okay, so I'm going to write the description here, um, game like Mario Kart, you know, uh, something like this, racing, um, we have cars. Cars um, that race. Yeah. All right. I mean, this is. Oh, and also, I would like to mention, yeah, this is in 3D just because it's like Mario Kart, unless someone decides to do two. OK, no, it decided to be 3D Mario Kart. All right. As for graphics, we need to have car graphics. We need to have player graphics. Oops. Oh, let's let's make these plurals because we have to add S's at the end. We have player graphics. We have to have the um, uh, the meshes for players and cars. We have to have the animations for players and cars. And we have to have the graphic and the meshes of different maps. Not maps, maps. For sounds, we have to yeah, um, just do engine starting. We have to have um, car engine running. Um, collision sound. And the sound of someone getting crushed under a car. Okay, let's not get that dirty. Um, I, I don't know. Car tires screeching. As for interface, we need to. I don't remember much interface in Mario Kart. I mean, just the ability to have a menu and select levels and stuff. As for 
performance. We, we can work on that later. So right now we have is you know, some of the basic assets we need. Of course, not all of it. So let's move on and talk about what we can do to make these graphics more polished. So assuming these are um, you know low poly graphics with with just you know bright sheets. What uh, so? Uh, let's think about this for a moment. We're just going to review some stuff we did in the pol polishing file. How would you guys describe these graphics? Tell me what some polished graphics would be. So, for example, um, we need we have car graphics. What should the car look like? Pretty smooth. Okay, so not a low poly. We're going to be more of a smooth graphic. And needs to look like a Volkswagen Beetle. That's something new. Um, okay, let's, before we move on to that, I forgot to specify something very important our environment. So, are we having a technological environment? Is it daytime? Is it nighttime? Can it be both? So how would you guys describe the environment of this um, Blueprint game? So I'm just going to say nighttime winter. OK, that's a good one. Time winter. So if some of our main colors would probably be dark blue, light blue for the sky, white, gray, Um, purple city shades. Oops, not shade, not shades, shades. Um, and it's, uh, maybe city tones as well. Okay, so that could be our color. And assuming we're in a city, we this could kind of be more of a modern slash technological. And yeah, so our cars would look smooth. They would look, you know, futuristic. We we don't want low poly. And um, okay, that's it. I, I can't really think about three D graphics really. Um, those are players. Uh, actually, no, we already did graphics. Let's do animation. So, we definitely need to have animations, right? Painting, but uh, yeah, texture rendering 3D. Yes, I agree. It's very, very hard. Um, animations, we want to have linear animations or do we want to have more realistic animations linear or um, linear okay this means like um non-realistic everything moves in one transition at a constant speed so if i were to get pick up my hand and say hello to you that would be a constant speed if it were more realistic, it would actually be, you know, like kind of speed up, slow down. So you still want linear animations, right? Sure. Okay. We're on our way to lose Kajam. I'm just kidding. For the sake of simplicity, that might work. We have. Um, okay, I, I don't know much about 3D animations. Um, so our meshes are smooth, 
graphics and meshes of different maps. Of course, we have to get the right textures. Um, there's not much to say about 3D graphics. I'm I'm terrible at all this. I don't really know how to, to polishing any polish any of it. Let's go. Um, sound. So in here, I'm going to ask you guys to help me balance the ratios of the sounds. Oh, we also need some background music. Sounds, ratios. All right. So it, um, if we're describing a sound, a zero would be a complete off and one. One would be at max volume. So I'm going to write down, uh, I'm just going to copy and paste our stuff here. Oops. And let's say what, you know, what ratio should we have? Let's, let's start with background music. How loud should it be from, from the range of zero to max volume? Okay, let me just add some dashes while I'm waiting for response. Nobody wants to answer. All right, should we turn background music to max volume? Sounds reasonable. No? That's expected. Let's see what Rayhan has to say. Background music at lower volumes. All right, what would be a good decimal value for background music? Zero point four to zero point six. All right. Zero point. Let's. So just for the sake of simplicity, we're going to go in between zero point four and zero point six. That's zero point five. Car tire screeching. I'm not sure about. I mean, these would all be sound effects, but then of course we don't want to have an engine starting literally sound like it's blasting through the, a player's headphones, and we don't want car tire screech. Car tires screeching to cover a collision sound. So we need to have balance. So car tires screeching. Okay, yeah, let's just say um, 0 0.8 for quick sound effects and 0 0.9 to 1 for tires. So, yeah, we don't want car tires over uh, powering a collision hit. So, maybe 0 0.9 would be good. Um, one for main sound effects. That would be a main sound effect. Um, this would definitely be a secondary since it's running all the time. Engine, you know, could do 0 0.9. And as for the car engine running, we need to have that acquired volume definitely louder than background music. Um, so to, taking a quick guess, I guess 0 0.7, 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 would be a reasonable amount. Since it's running all the time, so it basically counts as part of the background. So if you're having a good a bit of sound ratios in your blueprint, that would be very helpful. So interface, um, of course, it has to match the theme. The theme. And I mean, there could be a lot here, but we don't really need to be describing this. So, okay, now here's a challenge for everybody 3D performance. Um, now, performance in 3D, I've had some experience with it in one of my Kajam entries. It's not fun to optimize this because there is an extra dimension. You have to render a lot more, it takes up a whole bunch of RAM and all that. So, first performance, we, of course, need to keep a high frame rate. Uh, 
And then, like we said before, we have to minimize on, on memory and optimize. So if a car is not on the screen, we don't draw it. Don't draw an object that isn't on the screen. Um, some renderers do take care of uh, take care of that for us. So you know, um, WebGL does that. I'm pretty sure Unity does that for us. Yeah, we'll just keep keep in mind this. Um, so maybe don't use too many vertices in in wire meshes. I, I'm I'm not too sure about this, and I don't want to you know take on a topic I don't really know about. So yeah, we can just leave this about here and let's we're going to focus on doing a 2D game this time. Now, someone would like to mention a 2D game blueprint we could try to work on. Two D runner, so um, an infinite runner or something like Super Mario. I said, would it be something like Super Mario or would it be a an infinite runner, like uh, maybe Beat Saber? I think infinite. All right. Let's describe our environment first. So obviously this is going to be uh, 2D. And uh, so we're going to uh, be viewing the player from the top down or right side up. Maybe, maybe we should just do right side up. The player is running towards the right. And um, the theme, maybe we should just do a volcanic theme, just trying to run away from lava, I don't know. So that's, that we have our environment. Oh, we got to find the colors. Colors will be gray, red, orange, yellow, or all you know, fiery colors, black. And I think that's it. So graphics needed. We need a uh, maybe some tiles for the uh, for the uh, to, for the environment. Assuming this is uh, done in pixel art. So for graphics, we go and let's just say. Um, tiles for um, environment. We need to have a, some animation sprites for the player. Um, may, well, we can't just have the player jump over lava. We got to add some stuff. So maybe uh, fireball sprites. Going to you know crush the player. We need to have a background, so that means just a background environment that slowly moves along as the player does. And I think that's about it as for, as of now. So this we just define what our graphics are. So. Now, it's not much to say about graphics, we just say what we need. Let's go and design our, our sound. So, we need to have players' footsteps. Oops. We need to have a player jump sound. We need to have a uh, searing sound. For uh, for when the player you know falls in the lava or something, um, 
possibly a screaming sound. If we want this game to you know, be a little gruesome. And then lava hissing. For you know when it drips down or hits anywhere. Also, we, I, I'm just thinking we might need some smoke animations. So, like, in when if a rock falls in the lava or if it's just falling down in general. And one thing I forgot to mention about graphics that's relatively important is particles. So, um, I did not describe particles before. I will now. Um, if we take a if you take a look at some uh, like some games, there are smoke coming out of you know car engines, or there is explosions. There are there is blood spraying everywhere sometimes, and and stuff like that. So uh, any effects like that would be particles, you know, dust coming up from the player when they are running. So what's what our particles consist of? So obviously we need smoke. I'd say we need sparks, you know, coming off of fireballs or when they hit the ground. We need to have some sort of explosion for when a fireball hits the ground. And I'm trying to think of some others. Dust coming up on the player walks. And yeah, I think that should be it. We don't need too many particles. An overwhelming amount of particles will lag your game and sometimes even crash it. Um, so I don't put too much particles, but you're going to need a decent amount. So let's work on our sound ratio map. Go sound ratios. Let me copy everything over here. And also a very important aspect also is music as our sound effects. Here. So once more, as before music, we could set it from 0 0.3 to 0 0.6. Um, lava hissing, now this is also goes a somewhat sort of background music. Uh, not music, background effect. So I would say 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 in terms of volume. Um, uh, footsteps is more of a quiet one. We don't want footsteps to overwhelm the, the music in the game. So we're going to maybe go, and it should be more quiet. We don't want well, like it to, it to be even louder than the music. So I would say around. 0.3. We need to have footstep be a quiet sound. If we want the player to do a jump, that's that's one on interaction, so we need it to be a little bit louder. And the searing sound, when the player falls into lava and gets burned up, we're going to need it to be relatively loud, as well as the screaming sound if we have one. An explosion sound for when uh, when uh, when fireballs hit the ground or something like that could also be used. So this would not be counting as part of the background noises because it it hits every so often and it won't. You know, it's not something the player does on interaction. So a little bit quiet, a little bit loud. I'd say eight zero point eight would be relatively good amount of sound. All right, interface would be relatively simple in this sort of game. Since um, well, it just basically tells the player score and how long they survived, how far they run. Etc. I mean, a good practice for interface is to define the type of font you want. Um, I can't really think of any now. 
So yeah, that, that could be set aside. Performance. Let's move on to this. So we have uh, we have different things uh, on screen. So we have first of all uh, tile maps. We have particles. We have fireball. We have the player. And that's about it in terms of a uh, visual on the screen. Um, we do have also sound effects in the background. And I think that's about it in terms of elements going on at the same time. So tile maps, what can we do to, uh, to make the game perform a little better? So one thing we could do is we can well, we can remove them from the screen or, or not remove them from the screen, just remove them in general when they are not on the screen. Particles. Uh, for example, once a, a piece of smoke gets like evaporated completely and diffused, um, we can remove it. So once um, cycle is finished, we're going to just um, get rid of it. So remove from uh, remove from game. Fireballs also once they hit the ground. Once hit, uh, once hitting the ground or the player, remove the player. Um, we can't really do too much about this. Uh -oh. All right. Oh, yeah, we can't do too much about the player. Um, it may have particles coming out of it, but we've already taken care of those. So I'd say it's, um, Maybe cache some of its values. And finally, as for the sound, once more, as I said, um, limit the amount of sound playing. Huh. Oh, there we go. All right, speaking of which, looks like my rep will have has loaded. This is just uh, the intro. It has terrible sound effects. Okay, so I mean, this is relatively laggy. I'm just gonna choose something here and just go over what this game it does and how bad the sound is. So you um, you select your amount of units. You can see how the contrast is very terrible. You can't see the soldiers um, against the background very well. So I'm just going to click, and my units will start moving over to where I've clicked. Not sure if you guys can hear these sounds, but when fighting starts, it goes crazy because there are literally, there literally can be 20 sound effects playing at the same time. It looks like this. And they just kill everything. So you just go on like this um, in different waves. So we can just uh, close this and close the MP3 cutter. So yeah, this was limiting the amount of sound play. And I think that's it for this blueprint. You could, I mean, develop a lot from this. So um, we do have another 23 minutes, but I think we can wrap it up here. 
Uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and putting up with my terrible bandwidth speed. Um, see, you, see you next time, and good luck for Kajam. <laughs>